Welcome to United Methodist Church at Mount Tabor. Today is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We have some announcements for today. And first of all, I want to share with you this little pink suit here. Um, it's not a pink sleeve with bad connotations, but it is a good pink slip, okay? Um, it's a volunteer pledge. And uh, we're not giving out pens or pencils today. If, if you want, you can fill it in today with your own pens or pencils. Or you may take it home and bring it next, next week and just put it in the offering plate as an offering of your life and of your talents to God. So basically what it says that, you know, you, you, we all have talents to offer. And, and, and we'll talk about it a little bit more through our sermon. And... Um, and then, with those talents, you are offering um, your, your leadership to the church, to your church, to God's church. And um, eh, eh, so this will start from September 21st to August 22nd. We will create a whole calendar of talents and of um, eh, when are you going to give your talents. And um, I'm going to read this. Each of you must give as you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, under compulsion, for God loves our cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough to everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. This comes from the second um, letters to the Corinthians, chapter 9, verses 7 to 8. So there are many ways that you can serve even when you think you can't. And we'll talk about it a little bit later. All right, so um, Food Pantry Sunday will be the last Sunday of August. That's uh, August 29. And um, we really thank you for all the blessings that you have brought. Uh, we have collected 287 pounds of food and $170 in donations for this month. Thank you so much for your generosity and support. Disciples Fast Track Bible Study, we are one class away to finish, and, um, a, and we will, uh, for those that are taking the Disciples class, uh, we will notify when is the last class coming up. And uh, we will resume the study in, in September. And uh, so if you're interested, you can join us. And uh, we will let you, we will give you more information throughout the month of August. Minor League Baseball game. Pastor Jeanette, you want to give us more information about it? No, nope, that was last night. And we had a few folks there. What do you think, Remy? How was the game last night? Does he have his headphones on? Yeah. Lily, Lily, how was the game last night? Tell everybody. Tell everybody how awesome it was last night. Say awesome. Awesome. All right. So we had a good time last night. Mary, Russ, and the kids were there. We had a really great time. It worked out perfect. We couldn't have planned it any better. The fireworks, you could feel them. Like, it was great where we were sitting, and the fireworks were perfect. Um, Miners lost. Though. Yeah, well, I was there for the fireworks. But um, coming up this week, on Wednesday, we have miniature golf on the 4th. Do we still have to plan a date for the escape room? And we're going to have a movie night for everybody on the lawn. You know, sometimes it says youth, but I think, you know, uh, it depends on where you feel like putting yourself that day and how you woke up in the morning and what you felt like your body feels like. So youth, with quotes, you're welcome to join us for our movie on the 13th of August. Friday the 13th will not be a scary movie, but, you know, you're welcome to join us. And I have a tentative date until I speak to the church council for Bible study. Um, like mid-September or the end of September, something like that. And that's pretty much what we're doing. Also, very good. You know, movies out there in the lot are awesome. And uh, we have a huge screen, right? Yeah. And then we are blessed with uh, speakers that uh, we have loaned from some of you. Yeah. And uh, so, so you just bring the popcorn. No, we got junk food and everything. So yeah. you're welcome to join us. It's fun. Bring your chair. And your bug spray. <laughs> yes, and if you don't bring your chair, we may take a chair from 
So, but it's better to bring your own chair. So anyway, uh, please join us for the movie. It's always a surprise. It was a good movie last time. All right, so let's take just a moment to center ourselves as we continue with our worship service with the call to worship. to which you are called. We cannot do this alone. We dare not try this alone. So we gather as God's people. Lead a life worthy of your calling, a life filled with service and meekness. We come to build up Christ's body in humility and gentleness, with patience and love. Lead a life which reflects your calling, that life of peace grounded in the Spirit. We rejoice in our oneness of Christ. We would share the grace offered to us. Live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. We gather as God's family at the table prepared for us, waiting to be fed by the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Please join us in, in the hymn, Take My Life.
Do you know why I have this here today? Why? Because I want to talk about how the potato is like serving God. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't, right? Um, how could I, if I wanted to have this potato for dinner, how could I make it into a dinner for myself? Do you know how to cook a potato? What we should do with it? We could mash it, right? What else? We could cut it, and how else can we eat potatoes? Sometimes you get them in the drive-thru, with chicken nuggets. How else can we eat potatoes? We can use that pan. Right, we can make them into french fries. We can make them into hash browns for breakfast. The potato, there's a lot of ways to eat potatoes, right? And the potato serves us. Not in the way that, say, a waiter or a waitress serves you at a restaurant, but a potato serves us by providing something to us. It gives something to us. It gives us nutrition and minerals and vitamins, right? It makes, it's delicious. I love potatoes. Yeah, and did you know that there were also, there's also good turns? I do, yeah. And then you're eating, eating pizza and you eat 30 pounds of germs? That I didn't know, but maybe we'll talk about that another day. That sounds very scientific. I'd have to do some research on that. So, so if you eat food, then you would be eating good germs? There's some good germs in food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to help keep us healthy. Right. So, in the scripture reading today, Jesus' friend Paul talks about different ways that people were called to serve God and meaning that to do, to spread God's message, right? You could be a pastor, you could be a teacher, you could be lots of different things in order to serve God. And the potato can be lots of different things to serve us our food and our nutrition, right? And what we have to do as Christians is always listen and keep watch for the ways God is asking us to serve, to serve a church, to serve our community, to serve our families, and to serve God, right? So can you pray with me? Dear God, Dear God. thank you for potatoes. Thank you for <laughs> potatoes. And french fries. And, and french fries. fries. And remind me, and remind me, me to always look for ways to, always always look look for ways ways to serve you. To serve you. Sure. Amen. 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 Thank you. You can go back to your seats. And I'm going to look up that information. Those kids illustrations are the best. It's the moment to share our joys and concerns. Anyone wants to share our joys for today? It's a joy and a concern, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always get nervous as we, as the days of the wedding comes. Amen. Praise God for, for the love. Praise God for healing. Praise God for the many good things that uh, we have been showered with. Any other joy that you want, anyone wants to share? My joy is to see you all here today. And uh, it's a blessing for us always to have your presence in our church and also a joy for those that are watching us via um, Facebook or via YouTube. Um, it's a joy to have you too. Any concerns that we want to pray for? We're all good here, huh? No need of prayer. Well, I'll keep you all in my prayers for healing and for coming together, for love. May um, God's healing and love be with each and every one of us. Those, uh, and for those, um, um,
prayers that have not been mentioned and our silent prayers. May God provide, may, may God be there with them. And we'll keep our, our country in our prayers for um, COVID as, as we discover, you know, new things that are coming up. Pastor Jeanette? I have somebody here from Facebook that says, Lindsay Turpak says, I'm joyful that me and my husband made it home safe from our vacation. Amen. Praise God for coming home, saving vacation. God bless you. And God bless your family. Thank you for Facebook. Amen. That we can join at the distance. Blessings. Blessings. Anyone else? All right. Let us pray that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father. Father. Our Lord, Lord, heaven. Hallowed oh, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading of the scripture uh, will be made by Sharon. She will read the scripture today. Mike. Our scripture reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Unity in the body of Christ. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth, in building itself up in love. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's join me in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your word. May it be a lamp for our journey and life-giving. May the meditation of our minds, the love in our hearts, and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, our Lord, our Redeemer, our Rock. Amen. Today we're starting the second part of the letters, the letter to the Ephesians, or the letters to uh, the churches in Asia Minor. This letter, written by Paul or one of his disciples, have two main divisions. The first, chapters 1 through 10, we discussed what God has done. We could call it doctrine or theology. 
The second main division are chapters 4 to 6, and it discusses what God is doing through us in the world and how we are to live as followers of Jesus Christ, how, how our actions or inactions defines us as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ. Today's reading from chapter 4 starts with a therefore. Hmm. When I see a therefore, I get suspicious. Very suspicious. Its meaning is for that reason. So, we need to know what was said before. Because what was said before is the reason for what we are saying now. And right before the therefore, in today's scripture, scripture is Paul's prayers for the readers and the hearers of this letter. Thus, including us, today's believers. So Paul, in his prayer, is asking God to strengthen us in, their, in, in our inner selves from the riches of God's glory through the Spirit. Now, God's riches are unmeasurable. And Paul is asking a shower of blessings from heaven that will strengthen the readers and hearers meeting us today of this letter in such a powerful way so we can follow our calling. You see, a potato has a calling. You saw the calling of the potato to nourish us, to feed us. And there may be so many other things we can make with potato. That it's not even nourishing. There are other properties that the potato may have that could be used. Well, we are better than a potato. We are God's children. We are children of God. And there are so many ways that God is showering us with God's blessing to use us as God's hands, feet, heart in this world. And when we open our hearts for such gifts, there is no space for failure. Then Paul is asking God that Christ would live in our hearts through faith. And that as a result of having strong roots in love, we may have the power to grasp love's width length, height, and depth, together with all believers. See, the power of love, the power of love is so strong. The power of love is what moves the world in peace. The power of love is what moves the world in truth. But the power of love needs People, people together, people loving, means that we all believers of Christ as our Savior get that power of love and understand its width, how deep it is, and how far it goes. And then Paul gives glory to God, recognizing that God is able to give us even far beyond of what we could ask. It seems to me that Paul had seized the power to grasp love's death in such a way that even in his prisons, he never ceased to live a life worthy of his calling. And now Paul is begging, is begging us, readers and hearers of this letter to live a life worthy of our calling. What is that life? What kind of life are we called to have as followers of Jesus Christ? Called to be the body of Christ. Called to be the temple where God dwells as we mentioned previous weeks. Called to be God's love for the world. What kind of life is this? First of all, we need to understand 
that our life by itself is already a gift from God. And our calling is also a gift. It is not the result of the achievements. It is not the result of all of our efforts. It is a gift of God. And as with every gift, we have the freedom, we have the choice to accept it or not to accept it. With that gift, we accept it, comes the Spirit as a gift from God, pouring out into our life to strengthen our inner being so we can be called, we can become what we are called to be. What are we called to be? That's a good question. Well, each one of us has to discover our calling. And once we discover our calling, and once we accept our calling, we need to live the life that is worth it for them. That is, as Paul says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I know that it's not easy. Because that means not imposing our beliefs and thoughts, or even imposing on our any other, any action, because we think we know best. Because we think we are God's direct messenger. But with humility and kindness and patience, we will have difference of opinions, yes. And we do have differences of opinions. But we are called to dialogue. Perhaps with good, true dialogue, we will come in with humility, kindness, and patience. We may meet Christ. It may take years. We are know how difficult it is. And more difficult when some of us are tired of being hurt by others. Well intentioned Christians. It is difficult and this does not mean that we need to remain silent. No, it means that we need to continue to be open for dialogue, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And this goes in all directions. To those who are in a position of power and to those who are not in a position of power. In Christ, there's a place for true dialogue, for leveling the fields. In Christ, we are reconciled in peace. In Christ, we are all equal, with equal value, because we are all children of God. And when the Holy Spirit strengthens our inner self with God's riches, we have the power to live a life worthy of our calling. Because our calling is a gift from God. The ability to live our calling comes from Christ, who frees us from our own self-centeredness, who frees us from our biases and limitations. Therefore, we are free to be all that Christ called us to be. We are free to be humble and gentle and patient and loving and we are free to live in peace because Christ broke our chains. Christ broke all the chains that have tied us, that has kept us in captivity, that has kept us from loving each other. But it doesn't stay there. We are called to maturity, to grow in Christ, so we can come in unity to form Christ's body built in love. And you know, we're living in a time where we want shortcuts for everything. We, were, we want shortcuts to get to a place. We want shortcuts to find instructions. We want shortcuts for everything. We don't want to spend much time or much energy coming from going from A to B or A to Z. I have news for you. There's no shortcuts for growth. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. We don't uh, have such a shortcut, but as much as we Google, we may Google it, 
how to how to live, we may Google, we may see YouTube, we may do all that. But each of us needs to go through growing pains. Pains not because someone does something to us, no. But because some things that we have may need to let go. And that is painful. We need to let go habits. We need to let go ideas. We need to let go understandings. We need to let go self-centeredness. This is painful. It means stepping out of what we know and stepping into an uncharted territory. And that is not an easy task to do. We believe, we know what we believe. We know what we think of something. We know our habits. And many times we think this is who we are. Many times we think we are our habits. Many times we think we are what we believe. Many times we think we are what we ought to be. Well, I have news for you. We are not our thoughts. We are not our habits. We are not even who we think we are. And this is painful to realize and to accept. Perhaps this is what we have known. Perhaps this is what others have imposed on us. Perhaps this is what our own implicit biases have imposed on us. And you know what? We need to let them go and go through God's transformation process to become what God has caused us to be. The good news is that that ability does not come from us. The ability to let go and transform and be a new creation in God does not depend on us. Amen. At all. Thanks God for that. It comes from Christ. It comes from the freedom that Christ Christ has given us to be free. It comes from the broken chains that Christ is able to make, to do. The, the chains that Jesus has broken in our lives. Christ has made us free even from our own selves. We are free in Christ. And as long as we are living, as long as we are breathing, we are growing in love and in patience. There's no age for this. We're never old. Believe me, we're never old. We are never old as long as we breathe. Christ is transforming our lives with love and forgiveness. God has given us gift to be the body of Christ, to build the kingdom of God on this earth. God, God is calling us, some of us, to be apostles. What do apostles do? They show the world that God is still at work. God calls others to see prophets. What does prophets do? They tell the truth to a world that prefers comfortable lives. Do you have the gift to be an apostle? Do you have the gift to be a prophet? Perhaps you do. Perhaps you have not only the gift but the call. God is calling others to be evangelists. To proclaim the good news. The good news when others see negativity. When others only see what is wrong or bad. God is calling evangelists to take them the good news. To give them the good news. And to teach them how to see the life differently. God is calling others to be pastors. To care for others. For the broken and for the hurt. And God is calling others to be teachers, to bring knowledge and lift up those who do not understand 
this world and those who do not understand their place in this world. What is your calling? What is your calling? There are tools that can help us discover our calling. There is no age for this, my brothers and sisters. In the Disciple Bible class, we are in our last class, and we are working on discovering our gifts. We are using the tools that, there are many tools for that. So each and every one that is taking the class, we are in that process, in that last class, where we are working on discovering our gifts. And you know what? We are all, we all have a calling, regardless of who we are, in spite of who we are, or perhaps because of who we are. A good place to start is by talking to your pastor. Give me a call. Send me a text. Let's meet at the park. Let's meet, let's have a coffee. Let's, I need to talk with you. I need to figure out my calling. I'm here for that. I'm here for you. Contact me. It is a good place to start. Now with humility, kindness, and patience, we are built, we are called to build up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of our faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. This unity does not mean uniformity, but that in our diversity, we are called to live reconciled with each other as a sign of Christ's peace and God's unmeasurable love. By caring for each other, by building community together with humbleness, kindness, and patience. Trusting that our hope in the kingdom of God becomes a reality. When we welcome the stranger, the immigrant, the foreigner, when boundaries of hatred and divisions are broken, when we recognize that our individual freedom ends when the freedom of others starts, when love prevails in difference, when our life and our church life is safe, shaped in such a way, we are living a life worthy of His calling. We need to get ready for such a life. We need to get ready by discovering our gifts, by discovering our calling. Another way to start is by go back to the pink slip. And see if you do something, there's a gift. Come on, you're better than a potato. <laughs> you're better than that. I know that. I have that assurance because we are, you are our children of God. Amen. And the ability is God given, it's not your own ability. So let us come together to work for our with for God, for the kingdom of God to work in love, in patience, and in kindness. And may God keep blessing you and molding us until our hope becomes a reality. Amen. Amen.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us take a moment to confess our sin to God. We may pray together. God of unity and love, we have often lost our patience and gentleness and have neglected the spirit of unity and love that you have among us. Place within each of us a renewed spirit of hope and community. Have mercy upon us when we speak without love or act without humility. Cleanse us with the living water of your grace. Create in us hearts to, hearts to live in patience and gentleness. Raise us up to be your children, growing towards maturity in faith and love. It is your Son, Jesus Christ, who leads us in the way of unity and peace, sustaining us with his life-giving breath. Nurture us again, Lord, with his breath of life. That we, that we may truly focus on the ministry and mission you, you have set before us. Strengthen this church that we may be a model of ministry and unity for all the world to see. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The good news is that when we repent, God creates us a new heart and puts a new and right spirit within us. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As we recognize our offerings to God, um, let us remember the many ways to bring your, your offerings. It's not only your monetary offerings, it's also your life as an offering to God. And your monetary offerings are also needed to continue for the continuance of this ministry, not only for this community, but to the world. And we thank you for that. Let us um, uh, pray our offering prayer. Almighty, Almighty giver of all, all good gifts, gifts growing us the wisdom, wisdom to know that, that all we have to give is in our hands, hands only because you have, have given to us first. First. Remind us that you have called us in Christ to be gentle, patient, and loving, and at and one, one with your children everywhere. May the time, talents, and gifts we have been given, and the time, talents, and gifts we share to become one body, one body of Christ Jesus reflects the death of our gratitude for your many blessings. We pray this in the holy name of Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, enjoying to get their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blesses your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, 
we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfailing once we were no people but now we are your people declaring your wonderful deeds in christ who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light when the lord ascended he promised to be always with us in the power of your word and holy spirit on the night in which he gave himself for us he took bread he gave thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples and say take take this bread this is given for you this is my body every time you take it do it in remembrance of me when the supper was over he took the cup he gave thanks to you god he gave it to his disciples and said drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sin do this as often as you take it do it in remembrance of me on the day you raised Christ from the dead he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your holy spirit your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup and so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith Christ has died Christ is risen Christ will come again pour out your holy spirit on us gathered here and on us gathered through any other ways in Facebook or YouTube or any other ways. Pour your spirit to us. Pour your spirit to us. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the moment to take the bread and the cup. You have these little cups, and it has two chambers. The first one is the wafer. You open it first. This is the body of Christ given for you. Second chamber is the juice. This is the blood of Christ, your cup of salvation.
day service. It's going to be at the tabernacle. So instead of coming here, we're going to all go to the tabernacle. And we'll meet you there. We'll have a service uh, uh, with the um, children's day service. As we leave today from this place, let us leave knowing that you have been showered with blessings and with gifts. And we may go in peace, in the peace of the Lord, assured of God's love, to serve the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we may go in peace.